previously on Hell's Kitchen. Red team, who's going to sit out on this challenge? Chef Ramsay challenged the chef's palates with a blind taste test. It all comes down to this. And it all came down to the final pairing, Danny versus Paula. So what is it? Celery. Sit. The red team won their third consecutive challenge and were rewarded with a photo shoot for TV Guide. Is my hair OK? Lacey, don't make me look stupid. Get a grip, wake up. At dinner in the red kitchen. Stone cold, come on, that's not good enough. LA couldn't stay focused on the garnish station. Bland, cold, horrible mashed potato. Wake up. And Carol was lost on me. Carol, bam, back. Look, it's still moving. <gasps> Carol, are you going to blame the oven this time, or are you going to blame the sheep? In the blue kitchen. Come on, come on, come on. Robert struggled early on appetizers. Robert. Yes, chef. There's only one spaghetti. Look at the size of it. Yeah, you're cooking for the customers, not yourself. Lacey was clueless on the meat station. What's the matter with you? I can't cook meat, Chef! And before service was over, Chef Ramsay had finally reached his limit. Not good enough! And it was so long, Lacey. Get out! You're not good enough! The blue team rallied without her. The last ticket is two words until one chicken, one salmon. Let's go, three-man station, let's go! And completed a very successful service. You, five, did not work as a team. So the winning team, by a mile, is the blue team. The red team were told to nominate two of their own. He's given us an assignment as a team to be 100% sure in our decision. There's no way I'm going up on that block tonight. But they couldn't agree. Red team, have you come to a consensus? Some of us have different opinions on who should be up for elimination tonight. LA and Carol were the first two to be nominated. Just as a matter of interest, who was the other person? Andrea. L.A., Carol, Andrea, all three of you, here. But Carol didn't hesitate to stick a knife in her arch enemy, Andrea. Who would you send home? I would say Andrea over L.A. because she doesn't make excuses and doesn't blame anybody else for her shortcoming. In the end, it was L.A. whose dream of being head chef at Borgata Atlantic City went up in flames. Continuation of Hell's Kitchen. If you have something to say to me, don't say it up on the chopping block. Say it to me before then, we get up there. Then please. listen to me when I have something to say, and I will. When I try to talk to you, Andrea, you never want to hear what I have to say. You always cut so me off. So now it's my fault that I haven't heard anything about this. This is exactly my point. I can't get a full sentence out without you shutting me up. I think Andrea and I came in with the same mentality that both of our shit didn't stink. I think mine's starting to get a little stinky. She thinks hers still smells like peaches. Whatever you have to work out, work out right now. Go to fucking sleep. Wake up tomorrow as a team. We don't even know what we're straightening out, Giovanni. It's like Carol and I are just oil and water. Carol, you drive me up a fucking wall. Well, it's, it's completely mutual. Getting us to get along is going to be like building a freaking pyramid in a day. It's just probably never going to happen. Do you realize that this is killing us? Carol and Andrea are digging their own graves. Who do you think people are going to put up at the elimination block? Two of you guys, because it's a problem for the team. Mm -hmm. After a tense night for the red team, the chefs are ready to take on their next challenge. I feel good about our team right now. We're definitely a strong three guys in the kitchen. We just need a win today. Hi, right, good morning. Good morning, good morning chef. chef. This morning is the king of all challenges. The one thing that I love about cooking is to take a protein and evolve it. Let's, let's look at a chicken. Giovanni, name me some famous chicken dishes. You got chicken cacciatore, chicken marsal, chicken cordon bleu, 
Andrea. Chicken noodle soup. Uh-huh. Chicken a la king. Robert. Uh, Kung Pao chicken, chicken livers and hot sauce. Good. I love cooking chicken. As far as I was concerned, I was already halfway through my dish in my mind. So, today, Ben. Yes, sir. We're working with... Chicken. King crab. <laughs> <laughs> I have never in my life seen one up close and personal. Oh, my god. I had no clue whatsoever what I was going to be doing with that thing. Woo. Look at it. Yeah! Oh. When he lifted that king crab, I was just like, mmm, mmm. You get some butter and a metal bucket, because I'm going to town. Today's challenge is going to be a real test of the level of your individual ability to create something special. You'll all make one crab dish each. Do you understand? Yes, yes chef. chef. After you've finished that dish, come to a consensus of which dish you're going to put forward for me to taste. And then I'll have one crab dish from the blue and one crab dish from the red. Is that clear? Yes, yes chef. This is a challenge you do not want to lose. OK, 45 minutes from now. Go. Let's go. This king crab challenge will test the chef's creativity with one of the most sought-after seafoods available. Each chef will prepare one crab dish. Then each team must choose one of those dishes to present to Chef Ramsay. A true chef runs into the kitchen and has a game plan already set. I was already thinking about what the sauce was going to look like on the plate. So it was just a matter of my hands catching up with my imagination. Guys, I just dropped two, just to let you guys know. Already? Yep. I know what I'm doing in the kitchen, and I understand what Chef Ramsay looks for and where his palate is. Can't believe how many legs you're using for that sauce. I'm going to, yeah, I'm going to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, but I'm. Dumbass idiot. Have you seen a chinois, Giovanni? Excuse me? Have you seen a chinois? No, I haven't. Halfway, yes. Chef, any chance you could find a chinois for us or no? I can find you a chinois. Because Fuck yourself, Paula. Right? Yeah. Do you like a latte? It was just a bad call for Paula. It was, it was embarrassing. Sorry, Chef. Let's go. Last 10 minutes, guys. How do you want to do it? Let's, uh, let's plate and let's give it a little taste. The chefs have completed cooking their dishes, and it's now time for the teams to choose which dish they will present to Chef Ramsay. Yeah. Let's go. You got to make a decision. That's the most important thing here, gentlemen. Hurry up. Here. You know, I've been pretty confident with the dishes I've made in these challenges. I'm, uh, you know, I won two. Not a lot of crunch. It's very soft. You think so? I hope you're tasting each other's dishes. Come on. You think he's going to have a problem with the shell on the No, I don't think so at all. I left it there for a purpose. If we're presenting Andrea's dish to Chef Ramsay, the first thing he's going to say is, what the fuck are these shells on the plate for? Do you expect me to eat the shells? Paul, what are we tasting over here? Right here, broth. And I mean, there's a little piece of the crab. I just kept the crab clean with some vegetables in there and some chilies. Paula's dish looked the best out of all of them. It was a very, very good dish. Confirm amongst yourselves. Come on. I thought my dish was the one to go with. Um, I believe I am the strongest on the team. That's the vanilla, the sweetness, and then you've got sort of the spicy lobster. But remember, the sauce is going to be oh, spicy. Oh, man, I like that. When I tasted Ben's dish, I was really blown away with the vanilla and the crab. It's really good. I thought, you know, it's different. Oh, want to yeah. go with Ben's? You know, I personally felt my dish was the best, but I didn't want to cause a fuss. I like Paula's and Andrea's. Paula had an absolutely beautiful dish, but I really wanted my dish to be up there because I'm definitely ready to show Chef Ramsay what I have. Let's go for flavor. Let's go for fucking flavor. Andrea knows what she wants, and she pushes for it. I just kind of feel bad going, I want it. It's going to be my dish going up there. That's it. I like it the best. Go with Andrea. Andrea. Five, four, three, two, one, stop. Are you happy with the selection? Yes, yes chef. chef. Two dishes. Forward, let's go. It's an honor when people recognize your flavors in your cooking, but it's uh, definitely nerve-wracking being up there and your team banking on you for a win. He's going to be pissed that there's a show on the plate. OK. Andrea, what is it? Uh, we have two king crab legs, and it, it's lightly crusted in macadamia nut and asparagus, and there is a pear-infused butter. Doesn't look the most glamorous of dishes, does it? Her dish looked like a disaster on a plate. It looked like a crab with the runs. The idea of the shells for what? Presentation? Uh, it was... Cigarette box? <laughs> I simply wanted the diner to be able to experience the, the crab as a whole, and I didn't want to take that away. What, like a memento? Yeah, there you go. 
Must be some earrings tonight. Do you think the customers want to fight through that? It was embarrassing that I went out on a limb and I kept shell on the plate. Don't do that at home. It looks a mess. That is bland and disgusting. Right, Ben. Yes, Chef. What is it? The crab was prepared in a bit of sriracha butter, so it has heat to it. Um, it was not a very rich sauce, so that it wouldn't coat it and just saturate it in butter. Um, so I took some sriracha, a bit of cream and whole butter, and then I literally put the pre-blanched king crab leg into the sauce, covered it with plastic. Um, the I'm sauce, really I excited. used the raw crab legs, combination of fennel, used it, shallots. I put the shells and whatnot in the robocoop, just to pulse a bit. To Dude, it. what is wrong with you? Just shut up. Uh, I put we a reduced whole it. vanilla bean at the end, just a really intense, and sort of a subtle shallot flavor as well. Right. Yes, Thank you. Thank you, sir. There's only fucking two things on the plate. <laughs> Presentation, nice. When Ben was presenting his dish, and I just kind of saw Chef Ramsay's face, I was thinking, damn it, you know what? We should have put my dish up there, because it would have totally blown Ben's dish away. I've got king crab and asparagus. And we've gone to an extraordinary length to get that on the plate. But it doesn't have the wow factor. I am disappointed. Paula and Danny. Get your fucking dishes up here. Yes, chef. Take those two back. I asked for creativity. Ooh, my heart was pounding when Chef Ramsay called me up there. I was like, whew, here we go, man. Thank you. Paula, what is it? Looks lovely. Chef, uh, I made a basil coconut broth. The crab I kept very simple. I added a few bits of peppers and chilies and uh, kept it very, very clean. That is delicious. I'm very happy with that. Danny, what is it, please? I poached the king crab in a Madeira Blanc, pear saute with some fennel and celery for a little bit of crunch. That is delicious, Danny. Thank you, chef. Really felt great to showcase what I got. You got it or you don't, and I definitely got it. It's exactly what I asked for. You're showing it off. That's exactly what I asked you both to do. Why didn't these two dishes come up first? Or the consensus of the group, Chef. It's a team effort, so I allowed the team to make that decision. The winner is... The blue team. Well done. <laughs> Congratulations. I feel great right now. I feel awesome. Well done, blue team. Losers. Yes, Chef. You have some pretty disgusting work ahead of you. First off, I want the dorms spotless, spring clean from top to bottom, under the beds, in the showers, under the toilet. It sucks having to clean up somebody else's mess, especially when they're dirty. And then you'll be cooking and cleaning all the crabs ahead of tomorrow night's service. Is that clear? Yes, yes chef. chef. Winners, you'll be having the most amazing day with me on the beach of Santa Monica. Chef Ramsey's taking his boys to Santa something. Santa Barbara? Santa Monica. I'm from Chicago. We don't have any Santas except for the fat guy who comes down the chimney. We're going to have an extraordinary lunch on the beach. Nice. Where are you going, blue team? Right near the beach, boy. Now, when we get there, there's one more surprise. Go and get changed quickly because we have a Hummer limo waiting for you. Move your ass. Let's go. Oh, oh, chef. Huh? Chef. Quick. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes, sir. I'm just stoked to have been at the top of the totem pole today. Basically, I won it for my team, and I definitely rocked the house today. <laughs> <laughs> Red team. Yes, yes chef. chef. Yeah, I expected more. Andrea, really bad. Losers, you get the kitchens clean. I dropped the ball, and I, I totally know that. And I'm mad at myself as I am for everybody else on this team. I'm leaving dirty draws out. <laughs> give, him this, give him the skid marks, Robert. <laughs> I don't have no sorrow or mercy or feel bad for him. Screw him. Let him get a little taste. I'm keeping it real. Real funky. Fire! All 
All right, ladies. Bye, guys. Bye. See ya. Have Yo, I left guys. some dirty drawers on my bed. I want them pressed and clean. I don't know what your sanitary habits are like. Uh-uh. Oh, that's disgusting. <laughs> it's fucking gross. <laughs> there it is, son. <laughs> yeah, they finally right. got one big enough. Come on, big boy. Yeah. We deserve this right here, man. Well, gentlemen, put it in. Uh, uh, the trifecta. I didn't think we'd actually ever get to see the ocean. Hi, guys. Oh, He's on it. Hi, guys. Hi. Welcome to Santa Monica Beach. Ready for a great day? Yes. 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 <laughs> Look at him. Yeah, there's a weight limit on the segways. Oh, looks like I get to miss out on some again. Robin, come on. Come on, Ben. Round the corner. I'm going for it. Oh, shit. Oh. <laughs> when we go out on these outings with Chef Ramsay, it's like going out with a good buddy that's hilarious and jokes around and it's just great. Ready for some lunch? Oh, yeah. Let's go. Robert, come on. Oh. Come on, Robert. <laughs> Wait up, dude. <laughs> the men are having a great time with Chef Ramsay, but back in the dorms, it's no day at the beach for the red team. Oh, this is so gross. <sighs> Whoa. That is some smelly ass laundry. For all you house cleaners out there, I don't know how you do it. Dirty drawers being <laughs> strewn all over the floors. It's funky, smelly, balled up, mildewy socks. Oh, I'm so glad I do not have to iron his shit. While the red team works to get the dorms clean, back at the beach, the blue team is ready to clean Lovely. their plates. Look at that. Oh, man. That lobster was like butter. It was so delicious. And oh, man, like I was in heaven. Mm. Mm. Here's the thing. I'm looking for a leader, and I'm looking for a head chef. And all three of you, yeah, I've got a chance. Well done. Thank you, Sal. Well, hey, the Blues Brothers, well Blues done. Brothers. Thank and you, just, just spare a little thought for the crab cleaners in the red kitchen. Yes. <laughs> Son of a bitch. The water all up inside my glove. Working with Carol is like working with a five-year-old. She's always got something to bitch about. I never had any idea this is how big they were. This guy had his leg chopped off. <laughs> Andrea, she just never stops talking. There's just some people that just don't know when to shut up, and it's really, really annoying. Have anybody ever had Dungeness crab from the Pacific Northwest? Ouch. King crab fest. Of course, they have to come back while we're cleaning. This Saturday, all-you-can-eat crab. The red team looked miserable. But I have no sympathy. We rode some segways. We got segways all day. We had a big ass beach. lobster lunch. The best lobster, dude. Amazing. I don't want to hear about the good shit that you did today. Keep it to yourself. The uh, dorms are very, very clean. Spotless? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Carol, don't even think about it. Good watching. Now, the blue team, they like to rub it on our faces. Later. Have fun. Fuck them. What the fuck? I got anger. We're pissed with these people. The juice is flowing. The heartbeat racing. I mean, we have to pull this next tennis service out. After a good night's sleep, the chefs are ready to prepare for tonight's dinner service. But Chef Ramsay has something important to tell them. Right, good morning. Good morning, morning chef. chef. For the first time so far in Hell's Kitchen, each team will be responsible for their own menu. Wow. You go head to head for the very first time. Three appetizers, three entrees, and three desserts. I want true fine dining, stunning dishes. Both teams, upstairs, and come up with a creative, exciting menu ahead of tonight's dinner service. Move, quickly. Yes, chef. Oh, by the way, make sure you've got a crab special, yes? Yes, yes, yes chef. chef. Danny, let's run your special, dude. This menu is a chance for us to display our talents and our flavors and our styles. Write your special. Write the one you made yesterday. The stakes are high, 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 high. With an opportunity to display creativity, Ben quickly takes charge of the blue team. Baby roasted red beets. Like a goat cheese crostini or something like that? Absolutely. That sounds great. Crostini. So herb citrus salad with crusted goat cheese. With the freedom to create anything they want. What about carpaccio? 
I'm gonna do like a carpaccio or something. The team's menus are surprisingly similar. What about having a fatty good? steak on there? My suggestion is a big piece of red meat. Definitely halibut is just, I mean, amazing fish. I'm thinking halibut, gentlemen. And I think that if we go ahead and we take a halibut and we really try and go out there and do a method, let's say, for instance, a shallow poach. I'm thinking of three old, rich fuddy-duddies. And they're like, I'll have the poached halibut. Poached Alaskan halibut. And please, make it extra poached. With palm fondant, neither one of them are used to doing, you know, refined methods of cooking. Palm fondant, like, I mean... Palm fondant is going to be something that's done very old school French. I've worked in a lot of kitchens, but uh, some of these terms that Ben says, I have no idea what he's talking about. Palm fondant. Palm fondant. The beautiful potatoes uh, fondant. And palm fondant. Palm fondant. Palm fondant. I will never want to hear the term palm fondant again. I don't even know what it is. Shallow poached Alaskan halibut with confit tomatoes and palm fondant, comma, natural poaching liquid. What do you think? I wouldn't order that. Sounds good. With their ambitious new menus planned, the teams get to work prepping for tonight's dinner service. So I need to make sure I got 26 orders of potatoes. Well, I'd go with a little more in case um, I... I'm going to cook them right now and then uh, flash them in the oven for about five minutes to order. I'm, I'm just huh? concerned that they're not going to set up on time. The last French restaurant I worked in did those potatoes, and they were wonderful and delicious every time. While the red team has concerns about Carol's potatoes, over in the blue kitchen, Ben has concerns about... Robert, how are we looking, buddy? Where are you at with everything? How about those apples? I'm getting to it, all right? I'm getting to it. I love Robert to death, but we needed a little more hustle behind that muscle during prep today. But you asked me like six times already. Cool. Hey, How many do you want to get? Cool it, brother. It's me. The real Ben is going out for himself. I am too. And the egos are going to clash. OK, Jean-Philippe, let's go. Open house kitchen, please, yes? For sure. Now, let's go. Tonight in Hell's Kitchen, each customer will choose from either the red menu or the blue. Both teams' menus feature similar dishes, including carpaccio appetizers, steak entrees, and ambitious potato garnishes, Ben's pomme fondant, and Carol's gratin dauphinois. Can I have the off the red menu, please? OK, I'm going to go with the blue menu. Um, I would like to order from the red kitchen. Red kitchen? Okay. Yes. I would like to start with the carpaccio. Right, here we go. Listen up, first order, yes? Two appetizers for the red, two appetizers for the blue. On order, two carpaccio beef, entree, two New York strip, one medium well, one normal. Yes, yes chef. chef. On order, two covers, table seven, yes? One bisque, one halibut. Yes, chef. Yes, chef. Yes, chef. Let's go, ladder, Robert. Let's go, Gio, come on. Where's the beef carpaccio? carpaccio? In my hand, chef. Let's go. So far, diners are ordering equally from both menus, and the red team quickly sends out their first appetizers. Has absolutely zero flavor. It's like eating a piece of paper. Which are quickly sent back. What's the matter? The beef carpaccio, no seasoning whatsoever, chef. Bland, bland, bland. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely bland. Red team, hey, come here. Beef carpaccio, yeah, bland. Bland. Yeah, I guess I didn't seize it enough. You know, it, it's not good. It's not good at all. When you slice the beef carpaccio, slice it onto a seasoned plate. You can't just serve bland. Yes, chef. Refired. One beef carpaccio, nicely seasoned. Yes, yes chef. chef. Let's go. Let's go. Giovanni has under-seasoned his first appetizer. But over in the blue kitchen, Ben is being careful not to make the same mistake with his soup. What's the matter? Salty. Oh, Ben! Chef! Right, all three of you, come here. Here we go. Taste time. Quick, quick, yeah, dig yeah, in just, there, just, yeah? Just, quick, just, dig just. in there. Make sure to take a nice big mouthful. Big mouthful. Hmm. <sighs> I spit it right out. It was disgusting. Hey, salty yes. soup! Yes, You're yes, You're just yes. reheating it! Yes. So how can you fuck it? It was bland before it overreduced it. It's my fault. I should have tasted it, chef. You're clumsy. Yes, you chef. You salted it. Yes, chef. You over-seasoned it. Yes, I did, chef. You didn't overreduce it. Yes, chef. I'm a soldier. That's why I say yes, chef. Hey, clumsy fuck. Yes, chef. I'm going to put one up right now, Why chef. are you always looking for excuses, you? No, no, no excuses, chef. It was my fault. It's coming right now. I don't, I don't, I don't tuck my head in my fucking oven and cry. Oh, my God. Look at him. Look at fucking him. 
Ben's salty soup has stalled the blue kitchen, leaving some blue diners to watch red diners at the same table enjoy their appetizers. Mine is so good. No, I'm so sorry, you guys don't have to be fake. Mine. <laughs> Meanwhile, one red diner is still not enjoying her appetizer. It's the same goddamn thing. You played it the same thing. Oh, gosh, I am so going back there. One beef salad entree, one fast one New York steak. Yes, chef. Yes, madam. Totally flat, no flavor. Second time I've had. Okay, one. thank you. Hey, get the veal on, please. Yes, okay. let's go. Chef. Right. Don't whistle at me. I'm not your fucking dog. Yeah, you look more like a dog than I do. Fuck off, will you? Fresh beef cappuccino now. Yes. Woo! I'm gonna get whistled at. Come here, boy. Sit down. Thank you. He told me to fuck off. Did you hear whistling at me, that lady? Give that to the dog, yes? Put a lead on it in case she runs off with the fucking plate. Let's go. While the diners learn that it's best to sit and stay at their tables, back in the red kitchen, Carol is ready with her potatoes gratin dauphinois. Oh, dear. Excuse me. Oh, man, let's go. Come down. Hurry up. Taste them. Now, you, you get there. Yeah, there's a nice slice for you. Yeah. Fuck it. Hard and raw, chef. Fucking hell. Why are the potatoes crunchy? Who cooked them, then? I did, chef. Oh. If they go in the oven, when the comes in, they should be fully cooked. I don't know why they didn't cook. I've never cooked potatoes that long before sliced that thin. Hey, come in here. Come in here, yeah. I've got, have I got news for you, yeah? Tell him, then. Tell him. He's going to go and explain to the customer. What's happening, The dash of potatoes are undercooked. If they go in when the order comes in, they should What's be What's undercooked? Time. Say that again. If she fires it when the order comes in, when it's ready to go, the potatoes... A gratin dauphinoise needs to be cooked before we serve it. Yes, chef. Now you're blaming her. I'm not blaming her, chef. Hey, Andrea, she's trying to sabotage you. I'm trying not... to... What? I'm not sabotaging. I was embarrassed for Carol. She's pointing out other people's mistakes. Point me out. I dare you. Here's the next question. How long, then, do they cook? Maybe 10 minutes, chef. Um, Look how cool she is. Hey, chef, maybe 10 minutes. They should have been done. Why didn't they cook? Maybe 10 minutes, everybody, for your Gret and was. Look at them, the poor souls. Are you stupid? No, chef, I'm not. Bullshit. Those potatoes. I was embarrassed for Carol. Well, they cooked to begin with. Chef, yes, I cooked them in the cream for an hour. What? Yes. You cooked them in the cream for an in hour? boiling cream for an hour. Crunchy gratin dauphin was useless. They done? Tastes excellent. That one wasn't. With the red kitchen at a standstill, Chef Ramsay turns his attention to the blue kitchen and Ben's potatoes. Where's the pomme fondant? That's it, Chef. I thought pom pom that was cooked in butter. Nicely done. A pom pom then. Yes. Butter? Yeah. Fired. Nicely colored. I blanched them, Chef. I'm sorry. You blanched them? Yes, I did. Sorry, Chef. Pom pom don't mean something completely different to him. Isn't a pom pom that in America the same as a pom pom in Europe? Yes, it is. Chef Ramsay's entire vocabulary is completely foreign to me. He's foreign to me. How can that be a fucking pom pom? It just tastes at you. If that's a pom pom then, yeah, then I'm the fucking Pope. Ben is all about these fancy terms or whatever, but I guess it's not even a pom fondant. Pom fondant, my ass. It looks like a school dinner. Do something about it. All right, let's yes, just do the whole thing. Let's do the whole thing over again. While the blue team starts over on Ben's potatoes, over in the red kitchen, Carol is doing everything she can to rescue hers. What is that? I just poured more cream on it. I'm going to put it back in. My god. Oh, Jesus Christ. Are you mad? No, chef. There was no saving those potatoes, none whatsoever. They just look like shit. They look like fucking shit. It's awful. I wouldn't even serve that to a fucking pig farm, madam. Forget it. You don't care, do you? Because if you did care, you wouldn't serve me that crap. This is supposed to be your exciting menu. Really? I feel completely awful. This is such a great dish, and I fucking ruined it. I expect you, you, and you to come up with an alternative. Saute potato, green potato, come up with one. It's your venue. You'll look like this. Mm, no. Come up with one. Potatoes, sauteed fingerling potatoes. We should have just cooked the potatoes all the way. But everybody's been in the weeds. Everybody's been in the fucking shits. You know, it's just about picking yourself up and keep on going. Never quit. You're going a little bit loopy, you stupid cow. 
It's 90 minutes into dinner service, and with potato problems stalling both kitchens, Chef Ramsay is eager to get entrees moving. Two halibut, two filet mignon. Where is it? Yes, yeah, Chef, it's coming, Chef. I need three and a half minutes, Chef. Still three. I have the filets. I have one halibut. I was off by one halibut. That's my fault, Chef. It's in the oven. It's working. I need the full three, Chef. Robert's working as hard as he can, but Robert is simply not able to produce at the level that myself and Danny are able to produce at, and that's fact. What's wrong with the halibut? I got backed up. It's my fault, Chef. You forgot it. Yes, I forgot it. You're dragging me now, and the whole place is slowing down because of you. Yes, I'm Chef! You. My timing was off, but I'm doing the meat station, the fish station. I'd have to work twice as hard to keep up with everybody. Don't give up, Robert. No, I'm not giving up, Don't Chef. you dare give up! No! As Robert fights to get his stations under control, Carol is hoping to find redemption on the meat station. I'm going with my steak. Here yes, for the plate is hot, Chef. Is that medium? Yes, Chef. Madam? Yes, Chef. Your steak's rare. It's still moving. I just got so screwed up by the potatoes. It was so awful. Madam, one lamb medium. That's correct. You managed to get this one right, yet the fucking steak's not. Weird, isn't it? Carol's inconsistency is crippling the red kitchen. Meanwhile, over on the blue side, Chef Ramsay sizes up Robert's fillets. Robert, two fillet. One nice, one small. Why can't we get any consistency? Look at the size of them. Man, I cut them. Who cut the fillet? I portioned the fillet, chef. Oh, my god. Ben cut my meat all fucked up. You know, whatever. You're doing that to sabotage him. Never, chef. Never. Make yourself look good, yes? Never, chef. I gave every fucking inch of everything I had tonight. I certainly didn't deserve to be told I'm fucking everyone over. Hey, where's the beef? That's what he gave you? Oh, that was folded like that to make it look like a filet mignon. I tried to push it down, chef, yes. A filet mignon. Yes, chef. Look at it. I think he was trying to sabotage me, and I think Chef saw it. Ben, you better bring all your bullshit from your book, because fine, I'm coming for you. You're sweating again. I am, Chef. I'll take a moment. I'll take a moment. That wasn't sweat. Those were tears. I was in the fucking weeds. Guy's a fucking donkey. Two hours into dinner service, both teams are finally working on desserts, and Robert and Ben are frustrating each other. Come on, let's beat these bitches to the window, yo. Come dude, on. you're what? pissing me off, dude. I'm fucking humping. Who's pissing you off? You are. How about I'm waiting on food, brother? Yeah, Come on. You're waiting on me. You're waiting on me. What's going on here, guys? I need cheesecakes, buddy. What yeah, well, they on? take fucking time. I'm like, fuck you, man. I'm not here to make friends. I'm pissed. There's a fire in me that's burning so hot, man. It's napalm, man. Come on, please. You're doing this to sabotage them, aren't you? No, I'm not, Chef. Of course not. If Chef Ramsay thinks that I'm sabotaging people, then send me the fuck home. What's the matter? They requested medium, Chef. Madam, come here. I'm not running to you. Look, medium, and it comes out mid-rare. My head is buzzing. Look at me. Stop what you're doing. I've had enough. Switch it off. Close down. The red menu versus blue menu dinner service has ended in disaster. Now, Chef Ramsay must choose a winning team. I gave you the respect and the trust to come up with your own exciting, vibrant menus. Unfortunately, you couldn't even execute your own food. When I looked at the customer comment cards, I looked at the entrees. And let's be honest, that's the highlight of any meal, isn't it? Yes, yes Chef. The blue team's entrees were rated at 39% above average. Nothing to shout home about. The red team's entrees were rated at 54% above average. So the winning team tonight clearly is the red team. But you didn't win in a glorious, fantastic way. Let me reassure you of that. Danny. Yes, sir. You, on your own, go back up to the dorm and come up with one of your teammates up for elimination. Think hard. And piss off. I can't believe he didn't pick our team after my potatoes were so bad. Well, let's, let's be honest, we got lucky. This win for the red team tonight is certainly not deserved, and I was hoping that we would lose so we could shave dead weight. For instance, Carol. I'm in shock. I, I can't I mean, believe. Sometimes you need a little luck. 
I am the luckiest person in Hell's Kitchen ever. Yes, we won and I get to stay here, but I mean, do I deserve it? Nothing to be happy about. I'm not happy. We're gonna stay here another day. Literally, I'm going to pick apart the differences between Robert and myself. I know that this is a test, and Chef Ramsay wants me to make the right decision. Both of these guys, Ben and Robert, have pros and cons. Robert's the inability to move faster in the kitchen definitely put a lot more wear and tear on Danny and I. If you want me to step up on the fucking prep, I'll do my damnedest, but I bring it during them services. Do you feel that you bring more to the table as a chef than I do? Dude, I'm not going to sit here and say, like, I'm less than a chef than you. I'm a diamond in the rough, and I just got to be polished. Hey, straight up, I think that you are not able to bring it as I am for the team effort and even for the individual effort. And when you use the term diamond in the rough, it's exactly that, a diamond, but in the rough. I don't think either of them are going to win this competition. I think both should go up. Who goes home first? That's up to me. Like. I mean, in all honesty, would you rather have me in the kitchen with you, or would you rather have Robert in the kitchen with you? I have to think about that. Right, Danny, have you made your decision? Yes, Chef. Who is it and why? I chose Ben, Chef. I think that he has met his full potential here in Hell's Kitchen. Personally, I want to hear from both these guys, Robert and Ben. Step forward. Ben. Yes, Chef. Why do you think you should stay in Hell's Kitchen. I believe I should stay in Hell's Kitchen, Chef, because I bring a foundation of leadership. I go balls to the wall every day when I'm in the kitchen. I'm not a perfect person, but I believe, honest in the bottom of my heart, that I am the man for this position. You lead. You set up the station with the filet mignon, cut in 17 different sizes. Didn't even give a, a rat's ass, did you? Because you knew you weren't cooking it. You disappeared like a little snake off into the bushes. Robert, why should you stay over Ben in Hell's Kitchen? When I come out into this kitchen, I wear 10% of my heart on my sleeve. The rest goes deep into the food. It goes directly to the customer's mouth. I believe that I am better than all these chefs here, and I look forward to going toe to toe with them. Don't underestimate that underdog, man. You over-seasoned it. Hey, salty yes. soup. Yes, yes, yes. You're just reheating it. Yes. So how can you fuck it? It was bland before it over-reduced it. It's my fault. I should have tasted it, Chef. What's wrong with the halibut? And I got backed up. It's my fault, Chef. You forgot it. Yes, I forgot it. You're dragging me now, and the whole place is slowing down because of you. I have made a decision to send home the person that has sabotaged their team, and the person I feel personally has given up. Carol. Jacket off, and you're leaving Hell's Kitchen. You two back in line. You didn't even make a comeback. After the dauphinoise and the potatoes were screwed, you gave up. Thank you. Good night. I came here with the attitude that I'm going to win this competition. I'm going to be this famous chef that everybody wants to come and work for. It's very humbling to be standing here a loser. Tomorrow, we bounce back. Is that clear? Yes, yes chef. chef. Because in here, one of you is going to become the head chef at the Borgata Hotel and Casino in Atlantic City. Now, get some sleep. Yes, yes chef. chef. 
I absolutely relish to death another chance to stay in Hell's Kitchen. I know Chef Ramsay sees something in me. Look out, because now it's time for me to personally really raise that bar. Only God knows what a fucking soldier I am. Oh my God, music to my ears. I just had a gut feeling that Carol was gonna go home. Our dead weight's gone and we're lean and mean right now. I belong doing this, man. This isn't just a game. I'm proud of everything I've done since I've been here. Can other people say that? I don't think so. Carol knew she was out of her depth in Hell's Kitchen. I just put her out of her misery. Next time on Hell's Kitchen. We started with 16, 10 have gone. It's down to the final six, and the competition gets even more cutthroat. I don't want to go out like a chump. If you don't think you can win this, there's no one get the fuck out. I don't need no friends. I will step on the back of their neck to get to the top. One lucky chef hits the jackpot. I will be taking the winner with me to one of the top culinary cities in America. But a surprise elimination. Danny. Yes, chef. Who is the weakest cook on the blue team? Puts two other chefs in jeopardy. I'm really sorry. Both of you, take off your jackets. After a disastrous dinner service. Look at me, look at me, eyes! Not as pissed as I am! Donkey! A surprise phone call. I need all of you in the dining room immediately. Leads to a shocking announcement. Now, I'm gonna do something I've never, ever done before. Will any of the chefs realize their dream of becoming head chef at Borgata Atlantic City? I'm shutting down Hell's Kitchen. Find out next week on a Hell's Kitchen. Are you kidding me? You'll have to see to believe.